This is something that I did not know. And had I paid attention or researched, it would have saved me a lot of stress. Hey, so I just wanted to come today and share a few lock tips with you guys. If you're thinking about locking your hair or you're at the beginning stages, I would say about 12 tips that'll help save you a lot of stress on your lock journey. So if you're interested, keep watching. So the first thing that I would say is research your loctician, not just on the Sister Locks website, but actually take the time to Google them. Look for their social media handles, um, ask for their social media handles so that you can see what the pictures look like. You can see if the comments are positive. You can see if the clients are uh, responding to being tagged in the pictures, various things like that. Um, Instagram, from my understanding, Facebook is a good uh, avenue. So that's the first tip. So the second tip is ask as many questions as you think you need. Don't feel like you can't ask any more questions. If you have one more question to ask, ask that question because remember, this is your hair. This is going to be you wearing this. So you have to feel comfortable with being able to ask questions. The next thing, point number three, have a backup loctician. This is so important, especially if you're not comfortable with trying to figure out how to do your own hair. You wanna have a backup loctician because anything can happen. Your loctician can get sick and need to cancel. You can have an issue and need to cancel. So you always wanna be able to have a backup so that you won't have so much new growth that you're paying for another install. I've heard that happen before. I've seen that happen before. And also in case a situation occurs where you have to go to someone else, you wanna always have a backup. That brings me to the fourth point. Knowledge is power. If at all possible, try to figure out how to do your own hair. Uh, Dr. Google is great. Uh, the University of YouTube is even better. The one thing you have to remember is it's your hair. It's your investment. It may not be realistic for everyone, but knowledge is power. Even with locks, I wanted to know how to do my own hair because it belongs to me and I wanted to be able to manage it. And what happened, I went through a lot of trial and error, but I was able to learn how to do my own hair. That brings me to point five. This is something that I did not know. And had I paid attention or research, it would have saved me a lot of stress. Locks shrink. Yes, locks have shrinkage, just like natural hair. Getting better now, but when I first got my hair done, it shrunk almost 50%. Once it got washed, and that was just a shock to me, but it still shrinks now. Once I let this go, it'll pop back up, shrivel back up. Um, that's something that can be a, a bit of a shock if you didn't recognize that lock shrink. So you may go in with the perception of understanding that they're gonna look thin and that they're gonna swell, but you may not go in with the understanding that they're actually going to shrink. That was a big shock for me. Another point, and now I'm on to number six that'll save you stress. Pausing here to say locks do swell, so keep in mind the size you choose will still swell is make sure you start with the size lock that you want. With new locks, it can be easy to take, take down, but in the process of doing this with established locks, once you see what size you're gonna get, it's very hard. I'll give you an example. I didn't necessarily want my locks this small. I wanted them to be small, but not micro. Although I love my hair, it wasn't my initial goal to have my locks this small. It just ended up turning out that way but a lot I had to combine because for me they were just too small which in return I combined a lot in the beginning of my journey I was three months in the locks that I combined are fully intertwined within themselves uh try to find one 
probably this is one. You can see the lock is established now. Lock. Um, with the end still a little bit, I guess you can see. But now trying to combine locks that never swell, and I'll insert a picture here. A few that I combined, I ended up cutting the second one off. I ended up trying to combine two established locks and what would happen what is happening now trying to combine is they're not meshing together because they're they're established so it's very hard not impossible there are ways to do it um i even try to crochet some which some worked out fine here's one where i combined fairly recently and I had to crochet it. It is very time consuming. And then there are some where I just left as two head locks, which are okay to me because they, yeah. See, this is trying to mesh together. But this is one that I combined that's still not fully intertwined together. But hopefully it'll mesh together at some point. But again, that's so important to understand and make sure you get the size that you want in the very beginning because it saves you from the irritation of trying to combine later. The next point, point number seven, make sure you check through your hair after each retightening. You should always know what's going on in your own hair. Sometimes lacticians may miss a few and that's okay, it happens especially if they're good at what they do and those hands are going fast and you're talking and you're laughing, that's just human error. But you should always know what's going on inside of your hair because if one is missed and let's say you had this much new growth, you remember if you wash your hair in between retightenings, that's going to loosen that new growth up even more and then it's going to grow even more and you may end up having a whole lock that has come loose. So you need to always know what's going on in your own hair. My next point, which brings me to point eight, braid and band is so important, not just to keep the uniformity of your hair. I hope that's a word. Not just to keep your hair looking, or your locks looking nice and uniform, but also to keep the frizz down. That was something that I didn't realize how important it was, although I was doing so, I was not letting my hair dry and taking the uh, bands out and unloosening the um, braids too soon after washing and my hair was just turning into a frizz ball and the consultant I go to now she was asking me was I braiding my hair up at night which is part of the same thing with braiding and banding and I realized I needed to braid my hair up more although I like the straight look a little bit better the braided hair or braiding my hair is allowing the hair to kind of mesh better and it keeps down on the frizz along with the braiding and banding you also want to tie it up at night i still would always suggest a satin lined um bonnet or a scarf or something i have this one from amazon and it's got a satin lining in it I'm very careful with things on my edges. So if I was to put this on, it's not tight, but it's not loose either where it'll stay on most of the time all night. So something like then it has the tie so I can make it a little bit tighter at night. Having the hair off your neck, that helps as well as this, although it's double layered, does not make me sweat. It does not make me hot at night. So that's a great investment to have. Do what's best for your hair. Don't do what's best for someone else's hair or what worked for someone else's hair. For example, if your hair in its natural state broke off from bleach or coloring, Chances are you may have the same reaction in a locked state. If your hair from coloring the texture change, chances are it's going to happen with your locks. Now I'm speaking from my own experience. 
I'm speaking from the experience of friends who I know have locked, family members who, have, who I know have locked. So the things that you may struggle with, chances are you're going to struggle with those same things even in a locked state, but maybe not as bad. I'll give you an example with my hair. Um, one of the things that encouraged me to lock was that my hair started coming out in this same spot and it kept doing it no matter what. I was natural for years. I would cut it. Sometimes I would cut my hair, do a big chop to match that spot. And my all my hair would grow and that spot would still be thin or still be short. And Even with locks, it's almost the same. That spot still won't catch up. I don't know if you can tell, but the spot still won't catch up in terms of... I had to go back and find that area so that you would understand what I was speaking about. Length. For some reason, that's my stress spot. My edges have always been weak. My edges have always been on the lighter, thinner side. And even with locks, it's the same thing. So I'm mindful of that even when having my hair retightened, whether I'm doing it or the loctician is doing it. It's something I've always made very clear that my hair is weak around the edges. So, And it's okay to let whoever touches your hair to know, hey, my edges are weak. Can you be gentle when you're around my edges? It's just important to realize that those things may not change. The other thing I wanted to talk about is accepting your hair texture. Whatever your hair texture is, typically that's what your hair texture is still going to be locked. Your hair texture doesn't change. The hair does mat, yes, but my hair, it looks curly when it's wet, but as soon as it dries, no matter what product I would put in my hair, it still looks dry and it looks frizzy. It doesn't matter what product I, I would try because that's what my hair does. That's what my hair has always done. So although it may look great and cute to me when it's wet and it curls, I recognize and I realize that, hey, when my hair dries, those curly cues are not gonna look like that. It's beautiful on pe other people's hair, but not on mine. When my hair dries, my hair is gonna look frizzy, okay? And I can continue to try to keep it looking curly and to get the cute little ringlets, but the whole purpose of me locking for me was for my hair to be locked from root to tip so that I wouldn't have to treat the ends different because with the type of hair that I personally have, it'll eventually get hard and fat and matted. And that's what happened the first time I tried to lock. And I recognized that. And, and just to bring it back full circle to braiding and banding, that's another reason to braid and band because trying to pull a fat, hard knot through your hair when you're interlocking will pull and it hurts. And I'm just not about that life. I did not want the hard fat ends. I did not want to be combing them out so that I could have hair freedom for me. I mean, my hair wasn't gonna do that and I had to be realistic about the type of hair that I have. Now, the next point I would say, is only for people who decide that they want to color. Some people are against color and that's okay. You have to do again what's best for your hair. For me, I like color and I wanted that freedom to do so. But you have to also keep in mind that the color may not always penetrate through the lock and it, it, it may very well come out patchy or you may have to do it a few times. I really didn't want to bleach, but I did decide to bleach um, six locks. And I just did that up here in the front, hoping that they wouldn't break or come out. And so far, so good. It, I think it's three over here and three over here, maybe four, I, I can't remember. But I don't think I'll do it again. The next part of my journey, I'm gonna let the color grow completely out. And if I color again, I wanna color on completely uh, virgin hair and hopefully I'll get a chance to make a video later about why I want to let the color grow completely out. Now, this is my last point, I promise. The best hair decision is the hair decision that makes you happy. 
whether it be sister locks, micro locks, tiny locks, traditional locks, freeform locks, um, what do you call them? The, the uh, crochet locks, the locks that you um, add hair to. I can't think of it right now. But whatever decision makes you happy, that's the best decision for you. No one can make that decision but you. Because again, your head is on your shoulders. No one can make that decision for you. So be content and be happy and enjoy your journey. Even if you've had locks before, the next time around, you're going to know so much more. So you're going to do things maybe a little bit differently. Enjoy it no matter what you do. So I hope these points will help someone and save you from a bit of stress. Let me show you my hair real quick. I am about a week out from the completion of a full retightening. I did it myself this time and it took about a week and it was torture <laughs> to say the least. And I cannot wait to see my lactician on the next visit. But I did combine some. I know that I am not at 560 some more. I am definitely not there. I am right now 19 months locked and I'm enjoying my journey and I thank you guys for watching and I'll have a few pics at the end. Take care. Bye.